Welcome back to the Lionel B Show. You know what I'm saying? We got my boy Ronnie Bow in here, man, once again. He came back in here to give us some more information. Since y'all love the other interview so much, man, make sure y'all run this interview up. Like, comment, and subscribe on the video. Also, follow my man's. He got a YouTube channel. He got a hot new song out right now. So, Ronnie Bow, man, what's been going on with you, bro? Man, still campaigning. No. Free R. Kelly, free all black inmates who suffering from government corruption and uh, injustice, you know, that type of stuff. As you just mentioned, I, I just dropped the uh, Free R. Kelly song that some people know as the Jay-Z diss song. And, uh, right. you know, with R. Kelly being back in court, you know, I just want to, you know, do, do everything I could to support his return to the, to the community, to the streets. So, bro, tell us a little bit about, you know what I'm saying, you, you got some some more information out um, regarding uh, R. Kelly, uh, marriage to Aaliyah, man. Tell us a little bit about, you know what I'm saying, like some more information that you know about that that our viewers may not know. No, Aaliyah had a manager named Barry Hankerson, right? Mm -hmm. And this dude was like, he was really a kind artist. You know, he, he was all about getting money. You know, most of us about getting some money, but when you when you do ignoble things you know to get the money you you get labeled things such as being a con artist uh you know a fraud and you know what we, we, he had did around the time that r kelly was uh working with Aaliyah to develop her career you know he had pushed the publicity stunt, and the publicity stunt was to say that r kelly had married Aaliyah. Mm. It's just like if I was to marry Ice Spice or, you know what I'm saying, Megan Thee Stallion right now. And Ronnie Bo is not so big of a name right now. But if I was to marry Megan Thee Stallion or Ice Spice, somebody who in the media more than me, then I would become a bigger name. So that was, that was his thing. Like if I could say that R. Kelly married her, you know, then... We can we we build up her star and we establish her as somebody important because R. Kelly was was huge at the time. Right. You know, that was a publicity stunt. And for the record, it's no marriage certificates in Chicago or nowhere in the world. You know, they supposedly got married in Chicago. There's no marriage certificates there. You know, so that wasn't true. It's a publicity stunt, but that publicity stunt is is still affecting R. Kelly today in a, in a bad way. And uh, another. Now, I know somebody came out and said that um, they had a government official or somebody like that go get an actual marriage license um, for them. Like, well, because she didn't have the proper ID, so I guess he got her a fake ID in order to get a marriage license. No, that wasn't true either. Did they ever? Did they ever produce that? Because you know, I got all R. Kelly transcripts, and, and that that was never produced in this case. You know, we hear a lot of things, but. The proof never come out, just like in R. Kelly case, you know, people think he charged for the stuff that they alleged in surviving R. Kelly. He not charged for nothing on there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He charged for racketeering and uh, sex trafficking, you know, shit did uh, mob organizations and, and drug organizations and pimps is charged for. Mm -hmm. you know, he not charged for nothing to do with being a pedophile or you know n nothing of that nature you know what mm. i mean but again that that was a publicity stunt to make Aaliyah more established as a singer and it worked and another thing about this nigga barry hankerson man is you know he had a a 90 million dollar insurance policy on Aaliyah, right what did you say nigga? A, a, a life insurance policy right 90 million yes and you know, we, we done heard all the conspiracy theories like Dame and Dash posted sacrifice there for fame, but that's not true. The, 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 the fact of the matter is her uncle, Barry Hankerson, the same nigga who did the publicity stunt to say R. Kelly married her, had a $19 life insurance policy on her. And, you know, I, I don't want to say too much. I don't want to sound like one of these rat ass niggas, but you know, he, he he arranged the flight and everything when she mm -hmm. died. Oh, and 
and yeah. stuff like that. He was her manager, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. she died. He collected ninety million dollars. You know what I mean? So it's a lot of money, man. If anybody sacrificed her, it was him. He owns, if I'm not mistaken, he owns uh, what was it Black Ground Music, right? Yeah. And yeah. then he just he's getting ready to stream her music, or if he hasn't already. So yeah, it definitely it definitely sounds like a calculated move, man. Like he definitely knew what he was doing. Absolutely. The the you know some people are strategic thinkers. You know what I mean. And, mm -hmm. and most of the strategic thinkers work from behind the scenes. So to make her to put her out a publicity stunt to say she married R. Kelly made her big, and then her music. You know she was very beautiful, very talented. Her music made her much bigger, and then. Right. Became that star, you know, even movies, you know what I mean? But once she became that star, he felt like, okay, now she where I need her to be. You know what I'm saying? Now I could I could put this ninety million dollar insurance policy on her because she's so big. And you know, now I could, you know, create a situation to where I could capitalize on this ninety million dollar insurance policy. And that's amazing. Like more people should look at that, man. Okay, you got a ninety million dollar life insurance policy which is a huge amount and ironically he was able to cash in like you know a few uh, a few, uh, a few years down the road like 90 million that's crazy yeah and that's that's why i just like that shit never really came out in the media but people so quick to bash r kelly it's like it's like just a, a huge topic of discussion to say this man a monster in the just mm -hmm. like trying to say michael jackson you know, was was little white kids when he, you know, became so big in the world. Like mm -hmm. it's crazy, but why ain't nobody talking about Barry Hankerson? And, and why ain't nobody talking about the fact that Jay Z funded Surviving R. Kelly through Dream Hampton? You know, Dream Hampton was his ex girlfriend. Dream Hampton wrote his book, the Decoded Book. You know, he, mm. he he funded her protests in Ferguson. He funded everything that she ever really did in her career. So it's obvious that he funded Surviving R. Kelly. You know, and it, so so you feel like he basically funded um, that because of the beef they had with the Best of Both Worlds situation? Yeah, it it was a little deeper than the Best of Both Worlds situation. You know, R. Kelly sued him for like seventy million dollars after that. Mm. One, I don't know if he got the whole seventy million dollars, but he uh he won. So he oh, wow. he, he fucked with Jay Z pockets. And if somebody fucked your pockets, you're gonna be mad, you know. Oh yeah. You're gonna be on demon time at this point. Yeah, and you gonna you gonna want revenge. So he, he wanted revenge and that was his revenge to fund the surviving R. Kelly documentary and, and that that fucked R. Kelly life and got him locked up. So technically to me Jay Z is a rat to me, but but everybody yeah. on his, you know what I mean. And that's why I said Jay Z and my Free R Kelly song, you know what I mean. So with that, what what made you wanna like personally go at Jay Z? Because I know you know what I'm saying you and R Kelly, you know y'all built uh, you know a friendship when y'all was locked up together. What, but what made you wanna take this like super personal against uh, Jay Z and really get mad to that that point? Well, it's not really super personal against Jay Z. You know, I. Mm -hmm. Most of my interviews that Jay-Z is my favorite rapper. The thing is, I admired this man most of my life. So when you grow up admiring somebody, it's just it's kind of like how Malcolm X admired Elijah Muhammad until he found out Elijah Muhammad Elijah Muhammad had uh like eight, seventeen year olds pregnant mm -hmm. and wasn't taken care of. You know, he was discouraged by that. And you know, as youth, we look up to the rappers. You know, I don't know if you looked up to Big or Pac or whoever you looked up to when you was young, but we we admire these people as you. You know what I'm saying? These are the people who we grew up wanting to be like. And I, I admire Jay-Z to that level. So for me to, you know, be close to R. Kelly and find out what type of person he really is, you know, to find out that he put his money be behind a project that, that cost this man his life in prison will could because I got faith that R. Kelly gonna get out now. You know, his appeal is in. He got the same attorney that got Bill Cosby out. So I got faith that he'll be out. But at the same time, Jay-Z still funded a project that could cost him his life. 
and, and, and because of that, Jay-Z is a rat. And, you know, I grew up under gangster disciple, growth and development type of principles, and we despise rats. So, you know, it, it's, if, I guess you can say it's, it's personal towards him, but, but that's why. You say you was a fan of Jay-Z, so, but, you know, you kind of feel betrayed, it sounds like, because you thought he was on some real, you know what I'm saying, real, real ninja shit, but he really wasn't. Yeah, it's, it's when you when you look up to somebody as a role model, I, I was definitely a fan. I still like his music to this day. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the shit these people do behind the scenes, it be like, like damn, I was looking up to this type of nigga. Like you feel deceived. It's just like another example is if 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 you was in a relationship you know what i mean with, with somebody or or it could be your a, a brotherhood it's, if, if you got a best friend and you find out they talking behind your back or they or or they 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 was gay or something you know what i mean you gonna mm -hmm. be like come on bro we've been kicking it this whole time you did some gay shit you know what yeah I mean? yeah so, <laughs> it, it, yeah man kind of like that like like I'd have argued with anybody in the world that Jay-Z was the best rapper or did, did he the biggest boss uh, and, and, and the, the most stand-up nigga in the, in the industry, you know what I mean? But now it's like, like you people selling y'all souls behind the scenes, y'all y'all letting these, I don't even want to get off and tell all the, the shit they do behind the scenes. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but mm. yeah, I just, I just look at him different. Oh, man. I know what you mean, bro. I mean, I remember uh, I interviewed Jazzo. It was probably like 2008, man. This is before, like, the, you know, I was on YouTube or any of that. And, you know, he, he cool with Jay-Z now. But, you know, they had their beef and then they, they came back together. But uh, that interview with Jazzo, man, I wish I had the, the audio from that thing, bro. Like, he, he was... He was going in on Jay-Z, man. He was just like, you know, all Jay-Z got is a lot of yes men around him. But ironically, you know, money talks. You know, so at that, so at that time, Jazzo was going through some financial hardships. I guess they back cool now. You know what I'm saying? Jazzo with, with uh, Rock Nation and all that. But man, the shit he said on that interview, bro, if I was to leak that today, man, I know that thing would go viral, bro. He did not He did not care, man. He was like, pretty much, if Jay-Z was on fire, he wouldn't piss on him at that time. And this was like 08, 09. But it's, it's, it's crazy how, um, you know, a lot of people, it's always, you know, a lot of people say a lot of negative stuff about Jay-Z. Um, you know what I'm saying? I was definitely a fan growing up in high school. I used to, you know, play Jay-Z uh, Jay all the time. But just to see, you know, how people really are, you know what I'm saying? It's just kind of like, you don't even really want to meet the people you kind of grew up listening to or the people that you thought was entertaining. When you meet the real them, it's like a whole different uh, type of scenario. And that's how I feel. And another thing about Jay-Z is like, mm -hmm. This could seem, people could take this as conspiracy theory too, but uh, you know, he wanted to sign Tory Lanez and Tory Lanez wanted to remain independent. You mm. know, Tory Lanez went number one as an independent artist. That's something a, a lot of people can't say that they did. You know, you would think Tory Lanez was already with somebody like Rock Nation, but you know, Megan Thee Stallion really set that man up, you know? Yeah. He didn't do that, and and that's that's what they do when when you show that you don't need them and you still become successful. It's like it ain't even really. I don't even think Jay Z that much of a hater, but it's the people who behind Jay Z who controlling him. Like, no, we we gotta convince the world that they can't make it without us. So, right. what happened to do? He 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 either gotta die or he gotta get locked up, but. He can't be successful without us, or that's gonna make us look like we not the world power that we are. You know what I mean? Right. That, that's another story though. But another thing about Jay Z is is how Tory Lanez was blacklisted, mm -hmm. how Ali is blacklisted. Like they they trying to blacklist me because of the song already. You know, because of the, the Free R Kelly song where I say Jay Z. Soon as the song came out, you know, uh, my publicist, they got me, you read some of the articles, right? Like, yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, and now they was discussing uh, an interview on The Breakfast Club about the song. But mm. they, uh, DJ Envy and, and, and his people basically 
shot it down and they say iHeart won't allow us to interview him. But you know it's deeper than that, bro. And and, and like Jay-Z and Lil Wayne all of a sudden coming out with a song uh, this week. And I can guarantee you they gonna be sending subliminal shots at me in this song because in the article I explain how Lil Wayne stole my song in the back back in the day. And, and I, I, I mentioned that also in the Free R. Kelly song. Let's talk about that part. Let's talk about um, them stealing your song. What what song was it? And then tell us, you know what I'm saying, what parts uh, was stolen from the song? The chorus and the, and the beat, if, if you listen to my song entitled G-Spot, and you listen to uh, Young Money, Drake, Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, all of them was on there, theirs was entitled dead rock they obviously stole the course and switched it up and they obviously stole the beat and switched it up and this this just this not just something like people like like people would think i'm making this up for publicity but i did not put the rumor out here this was in the top 40 charts you know like if if you google the the 2012 david and goliath hip-hop just type in 2012 david and goliath hip-hop the article on the top 40 charts will pop up just saying that this happened, you know. Mm. Playing Young Money, Drake, and them stole my song back then. You know what I mean? So it's facts to support. How, how did so um did you send them the song or how did they how did they get the song or how did they hear about the song? I didn't send it to them, but my, my manager sent sent them one of my demos with a press kit. Mm. That's just how the how the industry worked back then. You when you uh, about to drop an album, you supposed to send a demo with a press kit to all the uh, major labels, all the A and R's, and that's what he did uh, against his own advice, basically, because he told me that you should never send a press kit with a demo to a label that's owned by another artist, and he did that anyway. I don't want to blame him. His his uh whole theory about it was that uh. Tony Neal supposedly uh, gave them the song. Tony Neal. That's from uh, core, core DJs, right? Tony Neal? Yeah, he supposed mm -hmm. to them the song. He was working with Young Money at the time. And uh, mm -hmm. I had an altercation in a club here in Milwaukee with Tony Neal. And it, it was nothing to me. You know, we just, we we had words. I don't know how Tony Neal feel about that today. But, you know, we, we, we had words. Uh, and... I don't know, maybe maybe he could have been embarrassed about how the situation went or whatever. That's, that's so tell us a little bit a little bit about the, uh, the Tony Neal situation. Let's unpack some of these things here on the Lionel B show, man. So what happened? You stepped to him like, hey bro, you stole my song or like how did that go down, man? Oh, this was before Lil Wayne them even stole the song. Uh you know, uh Tony Neal. He, he 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 pretty big. He owned Core DJs, was the biggest firm in the world. He broke a lot of records for mainstream artists. And me and him happened to be in a club at the same time one night. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy because I really didn't know who he is. But the niggas who was with me and everybody who knew him was telling me like like uh you should go holla at Tony Neal, you know, because I I was actually there for an event. I had performed that night, and they like man, dude on the core DJs, he, he can break you through the industry. So I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I go holler at him. And then, <laughs> you know, I, I learned that, that this is just his personality, but when I holler at him, he, he kind of get a little arrogant and cocky, right? And he said something to uh, rub me the wrong way. Like, like man, uh, I forgot exactly his word, but he basically was like, like, uh, you, you might be big in your city, but don't nobody know you worldwide. You know what I'm saying? You need to do something about that. And I took the advice. He was absolutely right. But the way he said it, I'm like, I'm like, bro, who the fuck do you think you talking to? Like, what is you saying? You know what I mean? That's how I took it because I didn't know his personality at the time. You know what yeah. I mean? When my people see that I'm getting frustrated and, and angry and hear what I'm saying, everybody rush up to him and it is is niggas who i wasn't even really cool with like that who ran up like like ronnie bo what you want to do you know what i mean and i'm looking mm. i, I ain't I mean for to, to go like this so i'm telling everybody else like no it ain't like that like fall back and then i chop it up with him man 
I guess once he seen that, he kind of humbled himself. Like, I don't know, maybe this guy might be somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was about to get on his damn head over there in that club, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I got love for Tony Neal. I, I mean, I, I really hope he don't take this the wrong way, but that's the truth. That's what happened. So, I mean, if he take it the wrong way, it is what it is, but that, that's that's what happened. But my mother felt like he felt some type of way still about me because of that. And being that he was working with Lil Wayne and then he basically was saying like, look, the nigga talented, he got some hits. Y'all might want to take this from right here and do something with it. You know what I mean? That was that was my manager theory. But my thing was, no, I don't think that happened. I think they got my shit because you sent them my press kit with that demo on there. Mm. So so once you presented him with that, like how, like how did he feel that he... Did he admit to it did he deny it like how did that go no he still man i'm telling you tony neal did that i'm telling you tony neal gave them that shit and basically probably told them to do that because the, the song was popping locally you know what i mean it was mm. on and, and other uh places in the region so it was picking up momentum locally but it's crazy because like six months after it came out it just like it, it's a whole story behind that. Some some of the shit I don't want to mention because I don't want to make people feel like I'm still holding grudges. But it was a a program director for a radio station here in my hometown, and she told the music director, "Uh, take it out of rotation because I'm hearing kids ask me what's a G spot, and that was the name of my <laughs> song." But. Mm. Bedrock, they saying G Spot too, and six months later, y'all playing this shit more than y'all was playing mine. You know what I mean? So right. it was just a lot of a lot of bull behind, behind that whole song. So did you ever try to like, um, you know, try to sue them anything like that for copyright? I mean, yeah, but <clears throat> you know, I had some legal issues. You know the. the caused me to be locked up at the time so mm. you no know, that was way more important than you know I, i'm fighting to get free you know what i'm saying so right. you weigh that versus fighting to get your money from this song which is difficult when you when you, you really don't know you know the, the legal aspects of the music industry and you know that these people got way more money than you and they could drag this shit out for years it's like okay let me Put that to the side and focus on me getting free you know what i mean right right that's kind of where i was at with it but now it's like it's so oh i feel like i could i could get the money that i'm supposed to get off that song by doing what i'm doing now and mm. this how i did the free r kelly song where i'm basically dissing jay-z and, and, and I, I i mentioned them stealing my song in there i feel like that a uh, create an atmosphere to where it off other hits that I got out. You know what I mean? And even mm -hmm. even Birdman brother uh Terrence Gangster Williams, uh I've been working with him and I'm I'm supposed to do a diss song against uh Lil Wayne and Young Money next. You know what I mean? And that's mm -hmm. what I feel like Jay Z and Lil Wayne doing what they doing right now. Like they got a song coming out this week and I can guarantee you listen to it bro. I guarantee you that they, they gonna send shots. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, 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 it's, it's people that's, I won't say in a circle, but you know, I I got I got some inside scoop about what they on. So they, they basically coming out with a song, should be out in a couple of days. And you might have to interview me again when you hear the song. Now you talked about in that song, you talked about, um... The only person you're gonna uh, negotiate with is Jay Prince. Why, why? Why would you say Jay Prince out of everybody else? Oh, you. Oh, so you listen to the song? Yeah. Well, I said the only nigga I negotiate with is Jay Prince, and then I said, "Oh, and Fifty Cent." Mm -hmm. you know? But you know, uh, I don't want to get my words misconstrued because people take shit the wrong way. But I just got out the feds like a little over a year ago, and in the, in the feds, you know. This is ran by organizations such as GDs, Vice Lords, Latin Kings, Blackstones, BDs, Crips, Bloods, you know what I mean? And I was embraced by the GDs. 
you know what I mean? And, and these was this was the organization I was with. You know, I I don't gang bang no more, or nothing like. But I grew up as a GD, and you know, me and Jay Prince directly connected to GDs. You know what I mean? So mm. I just felt like it'd be a family oriented thing if I was to sign with Jay Prince. You know what I mean? I, it versus me. Nah, that was some of these cutthroat motherfuckers who I don't even know. You know what I mean? It just I would feel more comfortable because me and Jay Prince know some of the same people. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. That's just that. Gotcha. So, so when you hear things about uh, Jay Prince about you know the extortion and, and things like that, and you know, you don't really have you heard about any any of the stuff he got going on? Yeah, like him extorting rappers and like probably like setting them up and getting their shit stole and then giving it back to them and how, how you feel about that when you hear stuff like that? I mean, gangsters move how gangsters move. Some of the shit may be true, some of it may not be true. But you know, me personally, you know, I'm a gangster too, so I, I, I don't worry. I wouldn't have to worry about nothing like that. You know what I mean? And, if, if he was to do some foul shit to me with, with us both being you know having ties to certain people then mm. you know he 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 would get himself in some trouble you know what i mean so mm. I'm, I'm really not worried about that part but as far as what he do with, with any other artists or anybody else you know that ain't got nothing to do with me he may have his reasons they may be fuck niggas they may be you no know, they 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 may be one of these niggas who, who let these music executives play with their or something. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they probably they probably deserve that. Now, did R. Kelly ever ever uh, come clean on that, bro? Not saying he did it, but did he ever talk about you know the the dark side of the music industry, like the the shit we don't see, like the parties we you know we don't get to see in Hollywood and all the weird stuff they be having going on. He he ain't never get into that. Yeah, and, that, and that's another reason why I stand up and support R. Kelly because he is stand up guy. Like people might look at him as this freaky ass R and B singer or pedophile or uh, whatever the media want want people to think of him as, but he was one of the guys who won with that shit. And mm. according to him, Jay Z is one of the guys that was with that shit. You know what I mean? So. Mm. Just being around the people that he he grew up around, like certain people just have integrity. You know what I'm saying? He he grew up around real real gangsters. You know what I mean? Who instilled in them? You know that's snitching and, and doing shit like that is just not us. You know so. So that that brings me to this this uh, other point here now. Um, in a uh, Surviving R. Kelly Part Three, um, they kind of highlighted uh, the guy from McDonald's, a 17 year old. You know he allegedly had uh you know some type of relationship with how do you feel about that like and you know what, what you want to say about you know the 17 year old male that he was dealing with man hell no <laughs> hell no i mean they they good at saying whatever they can say to to, to up a nigga name but man I, I don't see no truth in that bro so you don't you don't think he was into that? Hell no. Nah. I mean, I I heard about it be, before they, you know what I'm saying? Really put it out there like that. But it's just like, you know, what what they do is like they blackball you, and that's how that's how I heard about it before they put it out there. Because what they do is say, look, we got this against you, or mm-hmm. we can say this against you. Even with with some artists, bro, you go to these weird ass parties with these weird ass people and you drinking with them you're not seeing what they put in your drink and trust me a lot of artists who've been in that industry will speak out and admit that this shit happened but you've been on drunk some just you don't you just out of it you don't remember you don't know where you at and then you wake up and more telling you uh they put their dick in your mouth or in your ass or something you know what i mean and you don't even remember you were so gone. And, and they do that to people. So they, once they do that to you, they might bend down recording and say, okay, now, if you don't do what we want you to do, you don't want to sell your soul, then we just put this video out on you. You know, we we, we blackball you like that and make you do it. You know what I mean? And 
you know they 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 sometimes they make up shit when they can't get nothing on you. That's what they did to R. Kelly, basically. The Illuminati mob, one of the biggest mobs in the world, and they really high. Right. You know what I mean? And they really exist, but they so big, like people think that the people who controlling these artists is, is directly Illuminati, but no, the Illuminati so big, they controlling the people who controlling these artists, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They they focusing on other like genocide and, and taking over Russia and China and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and Jay-Z definitely in his feelings about the last interview we did, cause I don't know if you have been paying attention, but I sent you a few links to where other platforms picked up the interview that I did with you. I seen that, yeah. Went stupid viral based on the dis discussion we had in our last interview. Right. They went harder on him and and, and they was same in order or whatever than anything that I said about him. You know what I mean? So they Oh, they be watching they be watching for show, sure, man. Like I even got updates from Atlanta, man. I had um did an interview with D Haven. You know that was a uh, jay-z's childhood friend did an interview with him and um you know certain things we was talking about and i got word from atl man you know jay-z's alleged daughter that looks exactly like him you know it's a lot going on man so he you know he got himself together as a father took care of his daughter you know what i'm saying that looked identical to him but i wouldn't have known you know what i'm saying like ain't nobody hit me but it was like awesome. probably two two three years after i did the video so he because it, it went so viral to where like damn we got to fix this yo oh so he he eventually reached out to her after your yeah interview. he reached out to her bought her a house and all that bro like that's the last word i heard and i'm like damn that's, that's what's up but you know of course everything's on the hush hush I'm, you know I'm, what i'm saying it, it never you know once we we was we was hitting that dude bro he had to do something well i'm, I'm gonna see if uh my my other couple wives uh, uh, uh reach out to her and see if she want to join us you know what i'm saying i might marry his daughter oh lord <laughs> 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 go ahead babe do your thing bro do your well, thing hey, one, one other topic man i, I, I what's happening got to cover bro uh this nigga don russell right is uh r kelly former manager right now this nigga man this old goofy ass nigga, man. He, they had, they had did like a, 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 a live premiere for Surviving R. Kelly in, in New York, right, at Madison Square Garden, right. That's another thing to show you, Jay Z connected to that because that's where him and R. Kelly got into it. At. He sent bomb threats to uh, basically up Madison Square Garden because of them doing a uh, surviving r kelly world premiere there right right his his own mama told his ass look before you do some shit like that talk to talk to rob talk to r kelly first and and and, and let him talk you out of that because i don't think he would want you to do no shit like that and he wouldn't i know r kelly he don't want to bring no more trouble to him he already going through enough so right. He got charged for that. He got convicted. They only gave him three years, and of course, you know how you know how the police work and shit. So, of course, they told him, "Okay, we're gonna only give you three years, but you know you're gonna have to flip on R. Kelly." So this nigga got out and started saying shit like he did that for R. Kelly, and he did see R. Kelly fuck with. 15 year olds 14 year olds and shit like that but i just want to say man don russell use a pussy ass nigga you a fake ass nigga for doing that and you know damn well that ain't true bro like come on man that man going through enough like why would you why would you do that you take it upon yourself to want to send threats you know damn well i kelly didn't tell you to do that but you know i'm gonna I'm just leave it at that so you feel like everybody is capping? They definitely capping, man. They getting paid for that. A lot of them females got paid to go on there and and, and, and follow through with the scripts that, that the producers wrote to say we right. need to play. You know what I'm saying? We just how actors is trained to cry in movies. They was trained to be actors and cry and, and 
really happened, bro. That's how the media work. You know what I mean? Like all that shit was scripted though. And you know, his uh I just got a copy of his appeal that his attorney, uh Jennifer Bond Jean, put in. I I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, but uh she got a thorough appeal. You know, she got Bill Cosby out of, and it looks like she finna get R. Kelly out because they got text messages from the mothers of these females saying, look, this is how we gonna set them up. You know, say this, mm. do this, act like this. They got the text messages. This is not shit I'm making up. Right. Man, it's public record. You could get the documents just how I got it. But but look into that, bro. Like, the mm -hmm. man, look, he was, he was really set up, man. You know, the reason why I'm campaigning for him is not all about him, but it's a lot of black men in America that's, that's locked up and they cases is just totally bogus. Like, even if they was doing wrong, you know, you got, especially in the feds, bro, you got what you call relevant conduct. And that's, people could just say, this man sold me 10 bricks. And, and you could do life for that, bro. Just because a person said that. You know what I'm saying? And that shit. Is, you say that's called, uh, you say relevant conduct? Yeah, in the feds, they call it relevant conduct. You know what hmm. I mean? They try to mm -hmm. use. They, they flipped my girlfriend and, and hired her saying, yeah, he really was going to Chicago, buying large quantities of drugs and bringing them back to Milwaukee, selling it. And it wasn't true. She never seen me do none of this shit. But because she said this, they tried to use that against me to give me a lot of time. And mm -hmm. luckily, in her statement, she lied like four times, literally like saying different shit. So, yeah. Made it apparent like okay you're under if if this is true then she totally contradicted that in this statement so which statement is you really gonna say true you know what i'm saying <laughs> right both can't be true so they couldn't use it but at the end of the day it's a hundreds of thousands of black men that's locked up for shit that they didn't do and i just feel like campaigning for r kelly and 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 helping prove his innocence will draw light to the other hundreds of thousands of black men is locked up for shit that they really didn't do. Yeah, I, I agree with you, man. I, I I definitely feel like they should balance the scales out. Um, you can't just take somebody's word because, like you said, man, people get paid to say you know whatever that needs to be said in order to railroad whoever they want to railroad. So definitely, man. Well, yeah, want to get justice for sure, man. If he if he innocent, he needs to be exonerated. You know what I'm saying? Not not bulldoze and all that. Just off of a, a few different statements. They really don't. It's crazy because everybody who watched the surviving R. Kelly shit think that they got evidence on. They really didn't right. have absolutely no evidence, and that might sound crazy, but they really didn't have no evidence. They they went off just with people saying like no real evidence though, and that's. That's why I'm pretty sure he'll be out. You know, Free R. Kelly. Look up the song. That'll give y'all courage to say Free R. Kelly, too, because y'all so convinced out there that this man guilty, and y'all don't even know what the f*** is going on. If y'all really want to know before y'all speak bad on this man, look into his case. Look at the transcripts. Hit me. I'll send you the transcripts. I got them. You know what I mean? But, I mean, you can hit me on Facebook. My name is Ronnie Bo, uh, R-O-N-N-I-E-B-O. If you could, like, you know, put put the name up so they can see it. And you can look me up on Instagram through that name. You can look me up on Facebook through that name. And, you know, you can inbox me, send me a friend request, ask for my email or whatever, and I'll send it to you that way. You know what I mean? Before I go, I just wanted to remind everybody with regards to the, uh, the Free R. Kelly song. He actually speaking at the end of the song. He got a message that he want to get out to the public at the end of the song. So, you know, he would like for me to tell everybody to listen to the song and listen to what he had to say at the end of the song. Again, right. call Free R. Kelly by Ronnie Bo or type in Ronnie Bo Free R. Kelly and, you know, check that out. Listen to what the man had to say. People could say anything, but, you know, you got to hear from the horse's mouth. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, everybody that say every excuse me, media, every media outlet that say somebody guilty, but you don't all have all the facts, but you know what I'm saying? We in a day and age to where it's instant gratification. So if a news outlet say this, or if a person says this automatically in our mind, we assuming, okay, it is what it is. 
So, I mean, I, I feel like everybody uh, deserves their just due. You know what I'm saying? They get their time to, to prove themselves. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm devil's advocate, not the devil at all. You know what I'm saying? But, I mean, that's a word. But, yeah, man, uh, I, I definitely feel like, you know, he has an opportunity to prove himself. People like what they like. But, you know, if he ain't do no crimes, then man should be free, though. Absolutely. You feel me? So, on that part, man. Make sure y'all don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on the videos, share these videos. I'm peep y'all on the next one.